Hey guys, so in this video we are going to talk about some basic logging concepts, so let's get into it. In this video we are going to cover what logging is, why logging is important, and how I personally think about logging. So, first and foremost, what is logging? Well, logging is actually the simple action of putting a message somewhere in your code that whenever that piece of code runs it's going to print a message somewhere. Usually you have something you call a stream or something of that nature where basically you can print a log to the console, you can print a log to a file and you can also print a log to some uh, send a log to a database of some sort if you're doing something really really serious for small applic small time applications you usually are fine with just using logging to the console or logging to a file of some sort but that's the basic of logging and why is this important well it is important because when you are running your system and your users are using your system, if something goes wrong or if there's something you want to know about how the system is behaving, logging is actually the only way for you, for you to know that. Because when you're lo locally running your own little server and you can maybe hook in a debugger and step through the code and doing all of this stuff, that's great, right? But in, in real life, you don't have that option. So the only way for you to know if something, when something went wrong, what the steps were in order for you to recreate that issue is through the logs. The logs is the source of truth. It's what's telling you that something is wrong. It's actually the same concept if something goes down and something is not working, that's, it's the logs that are going to tell you if that is happening, if you have proper logging. If you don't have any logging in your application, you are flying absolutely blind. So then when we kind of accept that logging is important, let's move on to actually talking about the way that I think about logging. Now, as my notes here are telling you, there is no perfect strategy for logging whatsoever. There are many, many, many different ways of doing logging. In this little example of mine, I will simply show you one way of doing it and kind of try to illustrate the way that I think about logging. But to keep it, the short version is that the way that I think about logging is that everything, if, if I own my own source code, in other words, I own my own application code, I can really only find a value in logging things that are coming in or leaving the system. What I mean by that is that I'm not so interested in knowing if say I have a function or something that is being called. I don't care so much about the f the, the, the the logic or the function inside of my code, the functionality inside of my code, but what I am interested in is what's coming into the system from an external source and what I am sending back or what I'm sending to the external source and what I'm getting back. Think of basically, uh, let's say that you wanted to do a database query. In my world, I would basically log the query. In other words, say that you wanted to get a user from a database. I would log before I actually go to the database, the user's ID that I want to get. And when I've gotten a response from the database, I would log the results of doing that query. That way I know what I sent in, what I sent in and what I got back. The same thing goes for network calls. If a request comes in from a user to your application, what I will do is that I will log out the relevant information on the network request so that I know what's coming in. Say it's that somebody's posting a form to your website. What I will do, unless it's sensitive information, is to log out what's actually happening, what's coming in the request body, so that I know what came in when my function was start, my log, the server was handling the request, and then finally I log what I send back to the user. Having that mindset makes it is is fairly important, or at least the, I found it to be very useful. The same thing goes for batch jobs and scheduled jobs. Say that you have something that is, needs to run for several hours, and then you always always log when that job starts and when that job finishes. 
and of course if it fails or something like that because you want to know the timings because the only way for you to know if you can see uh, to, to figure out if there's a pattern to things failing or crashing and stuff of that nature is to know the timestamps that's why one of the biggest and most important things about good logging is that you always have to have a timestamp because you whenever you're debugging a large scale system the time when things are happening is the absolute best way for you to figure out the sequence of things and how they're happening and how frequent these problems or these issues are. So here's the mindset. I treat all external interactions with the system like a function. In other words, I log what I put in and then I log what comes back. That's the mindset. So let's have a look here to give you a demo example. Let's go to my little server here. Localhost 3000. And this is my application. My Dirt simple API. I just made a query. This is me as a user. I just got back an error when I was trying to use this application, right? So that's all I really have to go on. And so now I call your my the company support line and I say, hey, this the, this I get this error. It says error invalid query. What's wrong? If you don't have logging, there is no way for you to know what's what just went wrong. It could have been a million things that went wrong. So let's go to the code. Oh no, actually, let's go to the console. So here are my logs. So the first thing I'm logging out here is that there's an incoming request. Method is get. And I have another log entry here, which is incoming request query. There's a query object that I'm logging out here of some sort. And then request fail, valid. Oh, well, it should say fail. Request failed, returning error, error invalid query. Okay, so there's some logging going on here. Let's just take this string here, go to my code, and search. Okay, so I seem to have a log file here where I'm storing my logs on the disk, which is pretty cool because that way I can remember what went wrong, so I can see all the logs here. And here is something else. Let's look at this. So there's something going on here. This is the place where my little failure happened, it seems. Okay, so incoming request query. Ah, yeah, that's the first log. And then I see that there's an if statement here, request query dot Q is equal to equal to one. Okay, so that's not true because we did it. We saw earlier in the log here that right. So query was empty. There was nothing on the query, which means that this wouldn't have happened. This would have happened. Else, if there's no Q on the query, then okay. So now I get it. All right. So let's go back to our user. Hey user, you're missing the query parameter. And the user go, ah, okay, so Q equals to 12. Ah, oh, thank you so much, my system is working again, thank you. And then you hang up and everything's hunky-dory, right? And then the user does something like this. Gets another error. Now your user is on the phone again and it says, hey, there's something wrong. I tried to put the Q equal to 1 and then I get this error invalid number. Okay, you say, all right, um, let me just check that out for you. You go through the logs and you see, okay, there was an incoming request, method get, an incoming request went to, okay, something like, okay, so Q is equal to one now, but we still failed. All right, so let's go back again and you see that, hey, we have this weird thing here. We don't really know why this is happening, but for, there's probably a good reason some other programmer put this logic here. So Q cannot be equal to one because that's an invalid number. So you go back to your user and you say, hey, user, one is an invalid number. So just use any other number, right? And the user now understands that, oh, okay, that's what's wrong. Okay, uh, that sounds a bit weird, but hey, uh, my problem is fixed. Thank you so much. This is logging, guys. This is how important it is. It's the only way for you to know what went wrong. Because it's the only way to know for sure what the user sent into the system. So let's look at the server here. Uh, you know, actually, let's just look at it. This is just a basic, it's, it's a very basic express server, basically. Basic, basic, basically, and do, 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 do. let's look at the app here. We'll look at the in the on the at the logger in just a moment. 
So here is our server. We have some is valid middleware here, and here's our logger. So the first thing we do is that for every single request we get, we just do a log, an info log with the incoming request, which is going to be the method. And then we have a debug logger here, which is only going to run if we set the lo logging level to debug level. Well, we'll talk about that in just a moment and the semantics about this. So we have a single endpoint here. We see that, all right, so if there is a query that goes to the root, it's simply going to do slash query and then log out the query object for us. And that's what we saw earlier, that we actually have request, that, that we're simply logging out every request that comes to this endpoint. And then we create a message and then we basically say this is going to be the response that we want to send back to the user and then we send back the response. And this is the, lo th this is the pattern that I like. I log what came in and I log what goes out. This way I can full by just knowing the input and the output of my my logic here I can but just read the code and understand all right I have I know what the data going in was then I can step through the logic and kind of read through and see oh okay so it this is why it failed and then I see okay of course the response is going to be that if it, it becomes very easy to debug it so let's look at the logger itself so the logger yeah, I'm using Bungeon in this scenario. Basically what we're doing is that we're setting the log level, which we will talk about in just a moment, through a environmental variable. And that's very useful if you because you want to be able to tweak things in your logging setup because you can have different log types and different log levels. And different log levels just means, okay, so you can have some logs for information, general information that just you want to know every time something happens, debugging information that is more something that you just use for debugging purposes and then you have errors and warnings. There's ton You can read up on all types of logging policies. But these are the basics. So in Bungeon it's fairly simple. You just declare a, st a stream. I have two streams here. And basically I print to standard out and I also write to our little logs file here so that I can persist the logs. This is uh, this can get bit, a bit heavy over time so I urge you to read up on different logging strategies. This is just for demo purposes. This uh, Don't do this in production with just one file. There's better ways to do it. Anywho, so what was this log level thing I was talking about? Well you see if we go back to the application here, I had one thing here, debug. So the way that I think about it is that for info, you want to have the rule of thumb is that the info level is usually the level that you just log all the time while the system is running. But debug level is when you want something has gone wrong or you need to figure out, get more information than what you have at the info level. Info level should ideally be something very lightweight and that's what I use that for the most part. As I said, I just log out maybe a user ID going into the database and just a log message to verify that I actually get back a user with some information when that happens. But if you want to do like really more in-depth type of stuff, you can do something like this. And this is one of my favorite reasons why you use environmental variables instead of config files. So now I want to set the node lev uh, logging level to debug instead. So let's click that. Node server is now that. Refresh, and here we are. Now I'm actually, we see here that I logged out the method get, and then I have this incoming request verbose, which is, do, 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 no, not that one, this one, which is this thing here. And here I'm actually logging out all the headers of the request. I'm lo logging out the entire query and the entire body. This is as much information as in theory I would need in order to debug what's actually ha or no, to know I, I it, with this I know even more about what's coming into the system. So just in general use debugging for fixing critical issues that you can't solve by just using lightweight info logging. Hopefully this has illustrated a little bit about how to think about logging and why logging is so important and uh, I urge you to read up more about it because there's tons more to go through but hopefully this has been useful to you and have a great day.